Hello everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Final Fantasy 16. Last time we left off, we upgraded our equipment a little bit, and I guess we're gonna go ahead and get back out in the field, huh? So, let's see There's if we can do just that. Girl. Hungry, are you? I loved him. I love Chocobo. They're so cute. Look at them. Alright, open the world map, yeah. So, we need to go over here to Aurabel Downs. Uh, the idyllic plains that stretch across the southern reaches of the Holy Empire are sparsely populated, unless one knows where to look. So, there we go. Let's go ahead and travel over there. Um, someone also mentioned that the, the little d d d active time lore thing, or whatever it is, um, you can pop it up in cutscenes, like that, by holding it. You have to hold the button, specifically. Um, so, this is actually helpful sometimes. Um, I, I guess we're dealing with the Dominant of Fire here, so. We did, we did, Sid did mention last time that this place had the Dominant of Fire, or he knew of a place that had the Dominant of Fire, or a Dominant of Fire, so. Nation occupying the northeastern reaches of the continent of Storm. With the great city of Oriflame as its capital, Sanbrek is the realm's largest theocracy. And home to the Mother Crystal, Drake's Head. Under the rule of the Holy Emperor, the people of Sanbrek enjoy a life of plenty thanks to the Crystal's blessing, which they believe to be a gift from the goddess Gregor herself. A theocracy. Not crazy about that. And then, yeah, the Dominant of Fire is the person of interest for this location for now. Yeah, you specifically have to hold the button. I tried pressing it a few times, but... Um, it wasn't doing anything. But yeah, it's specifically a hold prompt. arriving before sunset. <sighs> I didn't realize we were this close. Any idea what that is they built the village around? The Fallen Rune. I've heard some call it an airship. Though its flying days seem to be behind it. It's a shame, that. You truly think a dominance waiting for us in that village? My scout has never given me any reason to doubt him. Which is why I think we should hurry. Come on. We should listen to Sid about airships. Sid has quite a history with airships. Hello? Obelisk. So tuning with an obelisk allows Clive to travel quickly to the location via both the world map and local map. Clive need only approach an obelisk to attune with it. Q. Louder than words. We're, we're talking about actions, huh? Alright. So I have already attuned with it, yeah, since it's glowy. I don't need to press X again. This will just allow me to... This isn't the first time I've seen one of these. Perhaps I can use them as way marks. Okay. Yeah, so... I think it was already active, but... Pressing... Blop! Opens a detailed map of your area. Galtan's Bales. Aurabel Downs. Okay. Let's get over here. I like this bridge. This is very cool looking. Oh, we're running fast. Okay. We started sprinty sprinting. Okay, so yeah, we're just getting down there. So is there anything here? Valley Matter? Uh, Wold Hound. Uh-huh. You're actually using all your lightning abilities now. Thank you, Sid. What was that? Four bloody eyes. Alright, sharp thing. Okay, so there are some creatures to beat up and stuff here. Um, I mostly want to get all, like, the items and stuff. So I guess we should run up here to this, like, building. Could be something it's interesting up there. But are they friends or foes? I guess we'll be finding that out. Give me a sec, though. We gotta go up here and check out this building. So, yeah, we check that stuff out. Wool Town. Hello! Easy. Ability finish. Two more bloody eyes! Cool. Alright, up we go. What do we got up here? Any more hounds? Maybe goblins in the house? Can't get in there. 
Silver Lobo? That just means wolf in uh, Spanish? Yeah? Bye bye. Ravage them. Punishing sick. Oh, cool. So the sick can hit them when they're on the ground to do the extra damage. Oh, that's cool to know. That was very good to know. So if I can't reach it to do it, I can just sick uh, Torgal on them. Neato. It's good to know. That Silver Lobo drop anything of interest or... I don't really think it did. I don't think I'm really missing anything over here either. So, I guess we can just go back down. Go see what those people want. I'm sure they're they're very friendly fellows. I'm sure it'll go very very well it will. Hey, how we doing? Uh wait, did I walk past them? Oh god, I did. I circumvented them. <laughs> Hey! How we doing? It's me, I'm behind you. Oh, hi. Uh-huh. Burning strike. Boom. There we go. Good. And I got a level up. God, I feel frightfully strong. Gods, I was strong. Why? What is it they want? You're welcome to ask the next ones we meet. Let me know how it goes. More Walud. So yeah, we just hold the button down and that's actually what opens it. So uh, we can see we already know about the Fallen, the Obelisk though. Ancient relics found across Valisthea. Their construction res uh, closely resembles the airships of the Fallen. But unlike them, do they not appear to have fallen from the sky, rather to have stood in place since time immemorial? They illuminate when Clive approaches, though for what reason it is unknown. After once being lit, they continue to shine with the same blue glow night and day, making them ideal for use as waypoints. Cool. So yeah, we can get some information by just holding that down while we're uh, traveling around. Um, I had, I had tried to press that at some points to open it, but yeah, I just, I just, I didn't know it was a hold. It didn't mention holding it to see it. Well, it probably did earlier, but I forgot. I mean, it doesn't mention it right over there with local map. Quest destination nearby. Mm-hmm. No sign of the royalists. Looks like a very sleepy Royal little town. For that matter. It's too bloody quiet. Even for this hour. What do we do now? First we look for my scouts. You start here, I'll circle around the back. How do I let you know if I find him? Good question. Shout? Yeah, I was about to say, just yell, it was fine. Subtle. We could have had Torgal howl, and that could have been, like, how we do it. I don't even know what he looks like. I suppose Torgal might not know how to howl specifically on command, but that would be an interesting way to do it, because people would just think it's, like, wolves or something nearby. They wouldn't think much else of it. Okay. So, if we look at our quest destination here, I can go down this way, or I can go down this way. Two different paths, it seems. I think I'm gonna go this way. It seems a little bit more secluded. No real reason to worry about that, I suppose. Not at the moment. The village can't be completely abandoned, can it? I mean, it could be. We activated another one of those, so yeah, we just have to be near it. I don't have to actually go interact with them every time. Is that a baddie? That's just said. Never mind. You miss me? I'm flattered, but let's stick to the plan, eh? Yeah, yeah, I missed you. I missed you, Sid. Alright, so let's go this way. So, yeah, over this way.
I mean, Sid did tell me where he was going, so. That sounds like a child. Right over there. Well, we're gonna ignore that because that's a main quest objective, and child or not, we gotta collect other stuff. Hmm. Can I make that jump? Probably not. Uh, not too confident in your jumping abilities, Clive. I can't get back there. Hmm. The hangman. Look around. So is this gonna unlock another town, kind of like our current one that we have, maybe? Or are we just gonna get all the people, like once we save it, that is. Or are we just gonna get all the people to move back in with us? I do like how they reuse the ruins and just kind of build their own things around it because the ruins are made out of really strong material. Kind of a neat detail. Can I go into the well as a dragon quest? It's not dragon quest. Damn it. No one here. I mean, I did hear that voice, but we'll we'll get to that. Black blood. Interesting. Can't go in any of those. Nothing there. What about down here? Whole lot of nothing. Alright, and there's another path up here I can take. Nothing. I have a little bit of a glare on my TV right now, so it's a little bit... If I miss anything, I apologize. I'm trying to be thorough, but... A little hard with the glare. Alright, we're good. Okay, so now we just gotta go back down there, and then I can work my way back here and hit up that thing. Uh, the quest objective. I, I say thing. I mean the, I mean the kid. <laughs> I probably shouldn't call them a thing. I was more so referring to the quest objective itself. Yeah, not really much of interest back here. I am blocked off from continuing this way. Hmm. Yeah, not really much. I found a whopping one treasure chest. Doing all of that walking around. Hi. Man's gonna die if we don't get into a healer. Enough of your barking, dog! About time. Stand back. So what was the deal with the crying kid? What, what happened to the crying kid? Lost Wing. Settlement located in central San Brick on the northeastern edge of the Great Wood. Having initially found prosperity as a stopover point for traveling traders, it fell from favor when newer, better roads bypassed it and eventually fell off the map entirely. The village is built both in and around fallen ruins that the people of Lost Wing claim was once called an airship. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. But maybe, maybe that quest objective for the kid was just like, oh, I can hear a kid crying from like, underground or something like maybe it was a well or something like that and we could hear the cries carrying and then that would lead me to be believe to go like oh, okay we need to find a way down to get these people i don't know <clears throat> who the hell are you Clive! that was a yell thought you weren't coming you still alive, Gav? <laughs> Barely. Been doing what I can for the villagers, but... I thought you were joking. It's alright. He's with me. Is this everyone? No. There were others. A pair of royalists came for the bearers just before you arrived. Was a dominant among them? 
Maybe. It's not like he was holding a sign. <laughs> Oh, hey, what's up? I'll give you one guess where he's going. Clive, after him. Chase! Pursue the fleeing soldier. I am imagining I'm not gonna catch you. Can't I just send Torgal after you? Torgal's faster than me. Torgal, sick him, boy! Go get that bastard! No? Okay. Well, we'll pursue the fleeing soldier anyway. Any word from the scouts? Not yet, my lady. But we are the dominant companion. It's only a matter of time before we seize our quarry. Very good. And what of the others? The bearers have been taken to Kaer Norvent. Some may still be worth keeping, should the Dominant elude us. All is in hand, my lady. They will not be spoiled. I give you my word. <laughs> You're not gonna take him to Care Morin? Taking him to a different place? A different Care? Alright, well we got some new characters to check out. Elite unit of the Royal Knights of Walud, led by Benedicta Harmon. Who lead clandestine incursions deep into the territory of enemy nations for myriad purposes. Espionage and assassination, chief among them. Sole surviving nation in Ash, Walud has its capital at Stonhir, home to the Mother Crystal of Drake's Spine. A warlike land, its considerable military might serves to keep neighboring uh, countries at bay. While Walud does maintain a notional alliance with the Dalmechian Republic in Southern Storm, it is very much a marriage of convenience. And Gareth. Second in command of Walud's royal intelligencers, serving under Benedicta Harmon, with whom he shares a deep bond of trust. A toast! Will you join me? <laughs> My thanks. To our lady of the wind! And the king! Ugh! The Imperials drink this piss? Well, it would go some way to explain their breath. <laughs> Lady Benedicta, Imperius! And instead of killing them, you lead the rat straight to us. Mercy! <laughs> yeah, that was expected. Look what we have here, boys. An Imperial Bearer. Good. I was getting bored. Time to see some wind magic. Boo. Okay. What is that thing? If this means what I think it does. We're in trouble. Get him, boy! Get him, boy! I mean, you don't seem super bad. Owie. Ow. I don't know why I didn't dodge that. Need to try to do more parries. I didn't believe in that one. You better be on your way. 
I don't know. I think we're pretty a okay here. I think we're doing just fine, Clive. Try to do my big damage there. Ow. Okay, well, you're super dead. Yeah, you were kind of not a problem at all. You were very, very easy, actually. Just kind of a mid-boss, though. It wasn't like we were fighting Benedicta herself or anything. Bunch of were right, though. And a Cleric's Medallion. Increases healing potency of potions by 20%. At a glance, what appears to be a holy relic able to channel the power of divine into curative energies actually contains the dust of a light aspected crystal, known to be a catalyst for the restorative arts. All creation is possible because of aether, which is what gives the formless form and a lifeless life. When an object is consigned to the flames, whether due to age, accident, or ill intent, the aether contained within is released and returned to the land. There are, however, rare instances in which an elemental charge remains trapped inside the resulting detritus. And skilled weaponsmiths can harness the energy for their work. Detritus. I've heard it pronounced both ways. Detritus or detritus? I think it's one of those that depends. But I could just be wrong. You've got some fight in you. Even for a branded. <laughs> Five! <laughs> Look who's here to save the day. Is this how you recruit all of your charges? Don't recall you complaining, Benedicta. So, Sidolphus, remind me, why was it that you betrayed your kingdom? I asked you a question. Lord Commander. <laughs> Why? Because I'd had enough of you and your king's antics. And yet here you are, stealing my branded. What are you plotting? As if I'd tell you. Benedicta, we have secured the dominant. Holy oh, something is there. Oh, you used an old ninja vanish on us, huh? And she's gone. Say where she was going. No. Then we head back to Lost Wing. One of the villagers may have heard something. But we can't just. Which is why I sent Gav. The man has a nose for these things. Trust me. <sighs> sure thing, Lord Commander. All right. Do we have any? Uh... Oh, I can't pull it up at the end of the cutscene. I'm going to pull that up in just a second, though, just to, yeah. Okay, it's just giving us more information about Lost Wing. I wanted to, like, just see if there was anything else there. Interesting. So, it wasn't about bears at all. They were looking for a dominant. Yeah, that's right. I thought we were hiding the bastard. Like any of us would keep a monster like that under our roof. No offense. When no one talked, they started rounding up everyone with a brand. And then everyone without one and all. And locked you in the cellar, hoping sooner or later someone would break. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, things might have been different if you'd accepted my invitation. Oh, don't remind us. We were all saying the same thing. Yeah. This is our home, innit? Yeah. Don't mean we won't help when we can, though. And that... I'll drink too. <sighs> okay, so this is just like another community there, but they specifically didn't join up 
with us. Oh, and if you pause the game, you can press active time lore right here. Um, yeah, so we can get a little bit of a reminder um, on all of these. A bard? I know what a bard is. And this is going to give more context about how bards fit into this world. But yeah, so... Founder and leader of the hideaway, where he and his comrades labor to liberate bears and dominants from servitude. Bears the brand of being the dominant of Ramu. No longer does he fought for any uh, one nation, but for all peoples of Valisthea, yeah. Commander of the King of Walud, so he used to be the Lord Commander of Walud. Elite intelligencers and a true scholar of the blade who leads her loyal minions from the front. Continuing negotiations with the Dalmex at the Zernitra stronghold, where she crushed the hopes of the Republic army while encouraging those of Hugo Kupka. Yeah. Okay. Into Imperial territory, yeah. So we haven't really seen that much out of the... Like, we haven't, we haven't seen many figures related with the Imperials in particular so far. Um, it's mostly just been a, bu a bunch of Benedicta and Sid. And Benedicta's, uh... Walud. And you are specifically, like, rebe rebels, so... Yeah, just trying to, just trying to map out everything in my med, uh, in my head here, so... Traveling minstrels who journey from place to place, performing in hostelries across Valisthea to the accompaniment of lute or lyre. Provide not only entertainment, but information on the state of the realm, oft singing of significant events and important personages. Hideaway has its own resident bard that the illiterate among its residents might remain informed. Yeah, that, that's an interesting thing about bards, you know, like, they'd help keep people informed and stuff for people they couldn't read because, you know, obviously you had to do the speaking. Tale of Lord D on the board, whose tamed worms a thousand and slain the tenfold. One hundred full legions the young dragoon led, and watched as a million foes turned tail and fled. His lance levels mountains, it spanned as the deep. The skies over storm breaks for the Revenge won't bring him back. It won't. Thirteen years ago, I watched a dominant kill my brother right in front of me. And I did nothing. But now I can. I can kill the son of a bitch. And bring peace to my brother's soul. After that, whatever happens, happens. Fight. You're content to be a slave, then. <sighs> Damn, could you drink any louder? <laughs> Sid. Meanwhile, at the Legion of Doom, Care Nor Dorvent. The Imperial Host Invincible. Yet here we find the Empire's cornerstone teetering on the backs of a handful of cowards and cutthroats. <laughs> well, Bahamut may lead a hundred full legions. Ah. Could it be that the young prince defends a house of cards ready to topple at the slightest breeze? Tell me something. Why do you not resist? Within you lies the power to slay gods. The phoenix perished in your flames. Yet you do not fight. You do not flee. You refuse your gift. Perhaps you are distracted. <sighs> My offer still stands. Join us and you will be treated with the respect one of our kind deserves. Lord Margrace, don't! Oh, 
I'll give you a moment to consider your options. Do be gentle with them. Hmm, okay. Specifically mentioned Bahamut in relation to the Empire. And that is straight up the one that killed Joshua because that's that's what Benedicta mentioned. So we got confirmation that's who that is and we actually got a name for it, Lord Margrave. What does the word care actually mean? Because the only other time I've ever actually seen that word um, is in The Witcher. So... Uh... Oh god, what is the meaning of care? A Welsh word meaning wall, fort, castle, citadel, as employed in numerous place names. Okay, so it's, it's basically just like a fort, castle, citadel, but it's Welsh specifically. Okay, interesting. The, for the first time I typed it in, it um it it gave me it was a, it was defining a word in Spanish for me. But okay, interesting, interesting, interesting. Just uh just like to know things like that. Clive. Mm. Wake up. Gav's back. Mm-hmm. What you gonna give us, Gav? Canovent. One of the Empire's outlying strongholds, though apparently not strong enough to keep out the Royalists. The captured bearers are inside. I'm sure of it. If Benedicta's orders are to stay in the shadows, she won't be traveling with many men. Meaning, she'll be keeping her prisoners together and close by. Including the Dominant. So, we find a way into the fortress and conjure a bit of chaos. Uh, what about me? Excellent question, Gav. You will wait outside the care and guide those I free to safety. And miss all the fun? Why can't he do that? Clive doesn't have your nose. He'd stumble off a cliff before he even found the men. Come on, Gav. You're the best man for the job. Well, when you put it that way. <laughs> suppose I'd better scout ahead for any surprises. Gotta stroke that ego. Don't you let him down. I won't. Sid playing you like a right. fiddle, Gav. Shall we? Not so fast. We wait until tomorrow. But he's right there. And if we leave now, we'll arrive just as the sun comes up. Maybe join the guards in breaking their fast. Come on, Clyde. They only just took the place. They'll be there a while yet. We've got one chance at this. You don't want to waste it. Do you? No. Alrighty. It is interesting to me that Care is Welsh in particular, considering most of the time I've seen it, it was in The Witcher, which is Polish. So, hmm. New stock. As the story progresses, new weapons and items will become available at the Hideaway's trading post, Karen's Toll, as well as new forging recipes of Black Hammer. There's someone I want you to meet. At this hour. He's the owner of the tavern, and our best hope of getting a decent night nice kit. Drink, Gotland 870, Brandwine, Imperial Gold, Meat, Pandem Pandemain, Stone Blue, Black Pudding, Smoked Kippers, Salt Loach, Roast Hare, Chocobo Stew, Carrot Broth. Interesting. Speak with Quentin. Alright. So, and this is specifically, yep, this is just a different town altogether, so. Alright, well that's interesting. Um, I could go back to Tomes, right? World map? Couldn't I, uh, couldn't I fast travel back over there? And we go hit that up? Yeah, let's go, let's go back to the hideaway. Um, I can read a little bit of stuff with tomes, and then we can continue. But at least we, uh, we have a name, and, well, 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 our characters don't, but we, the player, has a name. For now, we rest and regroup. There are far too few of us as it is, and I won't risk losing anyone through lack of preparation. Commanding presence. Cool. Um, alright. 
let's go ahead. Oh yeah, that's just the same thing that was spoken of before. So, this is not how I get to this. This is, yeah. We need to go to the fat chocobo over here. But cool. We're, uh, we're getting some good stuff. And it said there was new stuff available here with you. Look what the curl dragged in. Go on, man. The curl. <laughs> yeah, that is a cat. Oh, God, co worlds with their mind blaster and stuff. Oh, God, so many, so many rough times dealing with co worlds All right, what what new stuff do you got? Uh, I actually don't know. It said, it, I thought it said you had new stuff, but I don't, I don't think any of that stuff is actually new. Do you think we should go and help? It sounds like Otto has everything. All right, let's just go up here and talk to Tomes, why don't we? Hello. Good day. Or... Let me read. I got new stuff. Get me to level two. Hippocrates, good. What subject shall we consider today? Okay, relevant topics. Um, persons of interest. Let's look here. So we got some updates about Joshua. An heir to the Ducal Throne, upon the night of the Imperial Evasion of Fingsgate, the shock of seeing his father slain before his disbelieving eyes led him to lose control of his icon and set the castle alight. From the flames rose a second icon of fire, whose murderous rampage laid both the castle and the phoenix low. Jill? Dominant of Shiva and Clive's childhood friend, in the depths of the Niza Defile, the two came to blows at the orders of the armies that enslaved them. Jill fighting to defend the priests of the Iron Kingdom, Clive obeying the Empire's orders to take the head of Shiva's dominant. Exhausted from her tilt with Titan, Jill came close to falling to her assassin's blades, but was spared at the last moment when Clive's memories of their time together came flooding back. And yeah, there's you, younger. Torgal? Clive's faithful friend. The two were separated on the night of the tragedy at Phoenix Gate, yet reunited 13 years later in the depths of the Niza Defile. In the intervening years, Torgal not only grew into a fine hound, but met with Sid, who trained him to work as a hunting dog. After meeting with Clive again, Torgal gladly returns to the service of his former master. Yeah. Ambrosia? Clive's personal steed. During the attack on Phoenix Gate, she raced to Clive's rescue, saving him from certain death at the cost of an eye, a price she gladly paid. Yeah. So, yeah, you might come up again. Uh, Hugo? Kupka's awakening as the dominant of the icon Titan thrust him to the forefront of Dalmechian politics, winning him influence over both the Republic's armies and its policy making, as well as a personal fortune. He has little love for his country, taking advantage of his position to benefit himself and himself alone. His love for Benedicta Harmon, however, is absolute, and he would gladly betray his every ally just to be with her. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, it seems like she's trying to collect dominance, which does make a lot of sense. Because um, you're you're currently trying to convince uh, Ifrit to join you, and you also want Titan to join you. So Did you learn everything you needed. Interesting. So cool. With that, I think we're going to go ahead and end this episode off here. I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time for some more.